after being married to my childhood sweetheart for a year. She was constantly surrounded by scandals, until the day her first love returned to the country. I didn't go back home. She searched for me everywhere, almost turning the whole city upside down. When she finally reached me on the phone, her voice was trembling. Oscar, why didn't you come home? When I came home from work, I heard a commotion coming from the second floor. As soon as I changed my shoes, a man wrapped in a bathrobe ran downstairs. He skillfully grabbed a coffee from the kitchen, acting as if he were the master of the house. I didn't need to ask to know that he was a man Isabel had brought home. This month, it was already the ninth time. Master Oscar, you're home so late. The man gave me a provocative smile. He looked familiar. Probably one of Isabel's assistants. I responded indifferently and was about to head to my bedroom when I heard footsteps on the wooden stairs. Isabel was wearing a white shirt, the hem barely reaching her thighs. Looking both pure and seductive. Are you done yet? We still have unfinished business. Her soft voice carried a hint of unintentional flirtation. What she meant by business was obvious. Isabel had a pure face. But her actions were bold and unrestrained. Like a player. Miss Isabel, I'll be right there. The male assistant smiled triumphantly, looking at me with disdain, as if to say, it wouldn't be long before he became the master of this villa. I ignored them and walked straight to my room. Passing through the living room, I saw pieces of my favorite Lego in the trash can. I frowned. Who broke my Lego? The surrounding servants didn't dare to speak. The male assistant stopped in his tracks. An insincere apology came without any real remorse. It was me. I accidentally knocked it over while doing business with Sister Isabel. I didn't mean to. Master Oscar, you don't mind, do you? As he said this, he was holding Isabel's shoulder, looking very intimate, and my so-called wife didn't even bother to explain. Of course, I wouldn't oppose Isabel, as my company still relied on her. I smiled calmly, as if I didn't care. Of course, I don't mind. Anyway, Miss Isabel will compensate me with a new one, right? I looked at Isabel, her eyes cold. Although I was used to her being like this, my heart still ached involuntarily every time I saw it. She snorted coldly and went upstairs, ignoring me. Miss Isabel, slow down. Wait for me. My marriage with Isabel was a business arrangement, to be precise. My father was seriously ill. And the company was in trouble. So he arranged for me to marry into the Liu family for support. We were childhood sweethearts. She was a year younger than me. But Isabel had a boy she liked, who went abroad. And they couldn't be together. She married me under the pressure of our elders. For a year after our marriage, she treated me with extreme coldness. Bringing men home was routine. And being surrounded by scandals was not unusual. She was resisting the Liu family and me in this way. Clearly, she wasn't this bad to me before. When I was punished and mistreated by my stepmother as a child, she would complain to the teacher for me. She would take revenge from me when I was bullied and helped me prank my stepmother. I had liked her since I was a child, though she always thought I was lonely. Later in high school, her first love appeared, and we drifted apart. I buried my feelings for her in the deepest corner of my heart. No one could find out. The next day, there was a brand new Lego set, fully assembled, in the living room. Isabel, however, had been missing for several days, probably parting in some bar. I was too busy handling company affairs to care or have the time to find out. After all, my dad's entertainment company had been riddled with issues and on the brink of bankruptcy until I took over and fixed them one by one. God knows how I survived that period. Now, the company's situation had just started to improve, but it was far from a time to relax. As I was reviewing the contract, my brother Daniel called me frantically. I answered, Hey, make it quick. I'm busy. Just get to the point. Ito Makoto is back. Ito Makoto was Isabel's first love. He continued. Reliable sources say he's arriving at the airport tonight. Hey. Oscar. Did you hear me? Daniel urged, Sounding more anxious than I was. I got it. I replied calmly. As if it didn't concern me. That's it. He's your legitimate rival. 
Aren't you worried Isabel will leave you for him? My marriage with her is just a formality. Her messy personal life has nothing to do with me. We each get what we need. Moreover, the position of Isabel's husband wasn't mine to begin with. I used the excuse of being busy to hang up. Calming down. I remembered there was a banquet tonight that required Isabel and me to attend together. I checked our chat history. The latest message was my notification to her about the banquet. But she hadn't responded. Since Ito Makoto was back, I was destined to attend alone tonight. I downed a large cup of coffee, suppressing the bitterness in my heart, and continued working. The banquet was held at the Shijou Hotel, a property partly owned by the Liu family. The attendees were all from prestigious families. I navigated through the crowd, skillfully playing the role of a socialite. Suddenly, I saw a familiar figure, Maria, the best actress from the previous year. I had watched her movies in high school and liked her as an actress. My company had tried to sign her before without success, so I decided to greet her now, hoping for future collaboration. Hello, miss you. I am Oscar, CEO of Times Entertainment. I know, you're Mrs. Liu's husband, right? I smiled, used to this response, for a long time. People's first reaction was to refer to me as Isabel's husband and only secondly as Oscar. However, the Liu family name was quite useful. Maria was willing to chat with me for a while. Mr. Oscar, there are too many people here. Let's find a quieter place to talk in detail. I've been wanting to collaborate with your wife for a while. I didn't expect you to approach me first. Maria smiled and led me to the second floor. We exchanged business cards, and she expressed her eagerness to work with me. When it was time to leave, it was already late. She wanted to take the opportunity to have a detailed discussion with my wife, which I politely declined. Mr. Oscar, see you again? Sure. I watched her get into her car, a sense of defeat rising in my heart. The hierarchy of disdain in this circle was too evident. If I weren't Isabel's husband, none of them would have the time to entertain me. The night was deep, and the moon was hidden behind the clouds. Having had a few drinks, I couldn't drive, and I didn't want to go home anyway, so I hailed a taxi and went for a ride. But there were few pedestrians on the street, and only the streetlights flickered across my face. I had two homes, yet neither could I return to. I didn't want to see my stepmother's sharp pan mean face. Nor did I want to see Isabel bring Ito Makoto home. I went to Daniel's bar and party until dawn. The next morning, Daniel woke me up. Hey, your wife has been calling me nonstop. It's driving me crazy. Just answer it. I gradually took the phone, hearing a trembling voice on the other end. Oscar, where are you? I'm, I'm at Daniel's bar. Why didn't you come home? Her voice was hoarse. As if she hadn't rested well, my mind went blank for a moment, feeling very dizzy. Wasn't it because I didn't want to spoil your fun? Where I am has nothing to do with you. Right? Miss Isabel, annoyed, I hung up the phone, seeing Daniel watching me with a gossipy expression, giving me a thumbs up, bro. You finally grew a backbone, but would Isabel retaliate against me? Exhausted, I didn't care anymore and closed my eyes to go back to sleep when I got home. It was already afternoon, to my surprise. Isabel wasn't with her first love but was at home. She watched me with a gloomy expression. Then suddenly got up and rushed over. Oscar, you've really got gouts. Staying out all night. Isabel looked at me with displeasure. As if inspecting something. Miss Isabel, I'm very tired. Don't disturb my rest. Tired? You seemed pretty happy talking with Maria last night. What? Watching her short videos wasn't enough for you. Now that you finally met your favorite actress, you forgot who you are. Her tone had a hint of jealousy. Miss Isabel. I was just talking to her about a possible collaboration. Why does it matter so much to you? What do you think? Last night, my friend sent pictures of you two in our group chat. Do you know how embarrassed I was? Her face flushed red, as if she had been greatly wronged. So that's what it was about. I knew it. She wouldn't care about me otherwise. Isabel, aren't you being a bit hypocritical? You bring men home. But I can't talk about work with a woman. That's different. She stepped closer. Her faint perfume sent wafting over. Oscar, 
I'm warning you, if you dare mess around outside and make me look like a fool, I won't let you off. Her eyes were filled with displeasure. The cold or a nearly freezing me, I released my clenched fingers, giving her a fake smile. Don't worry, even if I did. I'd wait until you were dead, that way. I could openly have fun with someone else in your bed. I tittied her messy bangs, tucking them behind her ear. Who doesn't know how to be spiteful? Oscar, how dare you? She glared at me, teeth clenched. If you can do it, why can't I? If you dare, why shouldn't I? I gave her a cold smile and slammed the bedroom door shut. Outside, I heard a heart-trenching cry, which confused me. I was about to open the door, but then the sound abruptly stopped. I shook my head with a smile, thinking, she must be mentally unstable. What a drama queen. Oh six once the outside quieted down. I went out to eat. Aunt Lim was there, serving me soup, and couldn't help but speak up seeing my expressionless face. Sir, Madam was looking for you all night. She was really worried. Oh, I thought her haggard look was because she had spent the night with Ito Makoto. But so what? She was looking for me because she didn't want to be embarrassed. Afraid people would think I was out playing with other women. Before I finished eating, a call summoned me to the company. A celebrity had been exposed for soliciting prostitutes. And the company's phone was ringing off the hook. I had always been strict with the managers. So how could such a disgusting thing still happen? Financial losses aside, how long would it take to restore our reputation? As soon as I got to the company, I held a meeting and blew up. Did you all ignore my words? Didn't I say they should protect their image? Are they all tired of living? The managers trembled, tail-faced, not daring to look at me. I took a deep breath, asking for a report on the current public opinion. Get the PR moving. Don't try to cover it up. Just terminate his contract and issue a statement of reflection. Mr. Oscar decides him. The expose also mentioned an anonymous artist, also from our company. Yes, the manager's voice was as quiet as a mosquito. I suddenly felt a stomachache, nearly snapping the pen in my hand. Terminate the contracts, all of them, and demand compensation for the losses. After the meeting, everyone left in fear. I rarely lost my temper in front of them. They were probably cursing me in their group chat now. I opened WeChat, finding it flooded with messages. Some were mocking me. Others were making snide remarks because they believed Oscar only managed to save the company from bankruptcy because of the Liu family. Many people were waiting to see me fall again, just for their amusement. After dealing with the company matters, it was already 10 p.m. Exhausted, I walked out, and my assistant advised me to use the back door. The reporters were still blocking the entrance. I took the elevator to the underground parking lot, but before I could reach my car, a large crowd suddenly surrounded me. Mr. Oscar, what's your take on the prostitution scandal involving the popular idol George? Didn't your company pride itself on strict management? How did this happen? Mr. Oscar, the state newspaper has already issued a critical report. Didn't the Liu family warn you beforehand? The barrage of questions and flashing lights made me dizzy. I felt my anger rising, ready to explode at any moment. I'm telling you one more time. Don't even think about it. As I spoke, I turned abruptly to push away someone shoving me, but I used too much force and hit my head hard on the basement pillar. The next second, a figure rushed in, grabbing my arm. The faint scent of perfume brought a sense of calm to my chaotic mind. I heard her say, Enough. My husband has no obligation to answer you. If you have any questions, you can ask me. You've been so diligent. I've noted down the names of your newspapers. I'll be sure to visit you all with banners of commendation. Isabel's words were slow and powerful, her gaze sweeping over them with contempt. The crowd fell silent, and within seconds, they all scattered. I tried to distance myself from her, reaching to pry her fingers off, but she hooked her arm around mine, saying, Why are you avoiding me? Don't you know your mental state? I was wondering why you hadn't come home. I thought you were captivated by some vixen again. She snorted coldly, as if afraid I would make her a laughing stock. I wanted to retort, but everything went black, and I collapsed. Hey, are you faking it? Oscar. When I woke up, the room was filled with the pungent smell of disinfectant, 
My assistant was beside me. Mr. Oscar, you're finally awake. The young girl's eyes were red, making me think I had some terminal illness. I glanced around. That woman was no longer there, just as I felt a heavy sigh rise in my chest. Isabel walked in carrying a bunch of bags. She tossed the medical bill on the table and started opening the bags. You're awake. The doctor said you have low blood sugar and a bad stomach. Not sure what you want to eat, so I bought a bit of everything. The pampered lady who had never lifted a finger was struggling to open the containers, almost spilling the porridge. Since when did the aloof princess start caring about others? The assistant saw her coming and quickly found an excuse to leave. I'm not hungry. I shook my head. My mind filled with thoughts about tomorrow's headlines. Isabel frowned, her tone leaving no room for argument. You have to eat. Grandpa came to see you earlier and said you've lost weight. He thinks I've been neglecting you. So, she was reprimanded. That explains why she's suddenly so considerate. I smirked. Looking at the four in my right hand, it would take a while to finish. Just leave it. I can't eat like this anyway. Noticing my gaze, she frowned slightly. With a faint hum, she said, Then I'll reluctantly feed you this time. She picked up a bowl of millet porridge to feed me. Despite her reluctant expression, she waited until the porridge cooled before bringing it to my lips. I couldn't help but wonder how much effort Dito Makoto had put in to make her so considerate. Or perhaps, she was naturally kind to the person she loved. After finishing the porridge, she even tended to my wound. She was so close that all I could see was softness before me. She carefully touched the wound with a cotton swab as if I were fragile. My back stiffened, feeling not utterly uncomfortable. The few intimate moments we had were happening in a hospital. She glanced at me, a smile tugging at her lips. Why are you so stiff? First time. Too nervous. Her tone was teasing, making it seem like she was flirting. I remained silent, closing my eyes to steady my breath, trying to avoid further embarrassment. She picked up the medicine bottle, her touch gentle and precise as she treated the wound on my head, watching her serious profile. I couldn't help but recall her earlier days. The proud and carefree girl. The moon in the clouds. I had tried to reach for the moon, but she was too far away. A ringtone interrupted my thoughts. Isabel answered the call, sounding particularly irritable. Before leaving in a hurry, she reminded me. Oscar, something's come up at the company. I have to go. If you need anything, call home and ask Aunt David to bring you food. Surprising, she had always yearned for freedom and liked to do as she pleased. Yet now she managed the company meticulously. The company issues gradually settled down. Isabel hadn't brought any men home, and she hadn't shown up for several days. At noon, the driver brought me lunch, and I noticed something strange about the food lately. Aunt David's cooking had always been consistent, so why had it declined recently? Could it be that our prepackaged meals had run out again? I forced myself to swallow today's meal and received an email from actress Maria seeking collaboration. We had a new drama perfect for her. Though she approached us because of the Liu family. I didn't mind. At least her participation would add some luster to our company. I happily replied to her email, setting up a time to discuss the project in detail. Suddenly, a gossip news notification popped up on my computer. The headline read, Miss Isabel's late night rendezvous, suspected new lover. The accompanying picture showed Isabel in a man's arms at a hotel entrance, looking pitiful and intimate, as if she were acting coquettishly, but my eyes focused solely on the man's blurred profile. Even from his silhouette, I could recognize E. Tomokoto. No wonder my assistant and employees had been hesitant to speak to me this morning. The joy I had felt moments ago plummeted into a pit. A wave of dull pain followed. It seemed Isabel had been busy with him these past few days. How naive of me to think she was preoccupied with company matters. She stayed out all night and still had the nerve to control me. What a joke. I looked at Maria's email, which subtly hinted at her desire to meet Isabel's father. I clenched my fingers, taking a deep breath. Why did everyone want to get to know the Liu family through me? I am Oscar. The next moment, I picked up the phone and dialed a number. Hello, lawyer David. Please draft a divorce agreement for me. How? Does Miss Liu know about this? Is it necessary? Once you draft it, she know. Perhaps my tone was too cold. 
The person on the other end paused and didn't say anything more. Lawyer David worked quickly. By Friday, after I finished a meeting, I saw several missed calls from Isabel. I called back, and as soon as she picked up, her voice was hysterical. Oscar, what are you doing? What do you mean? Miss, Liu is not illiterate. She can understand the words on the document. Divorce. Do you think you can come and go from the Liu family as you please? I looked down, remembering the help Mr. Liu had given me. Don't worry. I'll leave with nothing. I won't take advantage of you. The Liu family has helped me a lot. If you ever need anything, you can always contact me. I could hear her gritting her teeth through the phone. Oscar, you're dreaming. You're not allowed to leave until I permit it. Childish. I frowned and lowered my voice. Isabel, how long do you plan to humiliate me? The person on the other end paused, seemingly choked up. Even if I owe your family, I'm not your punching bag. I've enjoyed many conveniences thanks to the Liu family, but I've also helped the Liu family with many matters. In the end, people only see me as your husband, pointing fingers behind my back. I sigh. Isabel, I'm tired. I want to be myself. She was silent for a long time, so long that I thought she hadn't heard me. I tore up the divorce agreement. If you want to divorce, come talk to me in person. The phone was hung up. I frowned, feeling a surge of irritation. Was it my imagination? Or did her voice sound a bit choked up just now? I took the divorce agreement back home, but she didn't come back all night. Not only that, but she also refused to answer my calls. I didn't have time to continue this with Isabel, so I packed my bags and moved out. I decided to handle the divorce through litigation. On Sunday, I was at home packing my things. The servants wanted to help, but I stopped them. They all looked at me timidly, not daring to speak. I thought there would be a lot of stuff, but in the end, it was just two suitcases. Everything left in the house was luxury brands Isabel gave me for appearances. Suddenly, the door opened, and Isabel walked in with a cold expression, reeking of alcohol from a hangover. I didn't want to know which man's bed she had just crawled out of. She stared at me, her voice icy, hate, tacked so quickly. I ignored her and closed the suitcase. Something seemed to trigger her, and she choked up as she rushed forward, grabbing my arm. Oscar. What do you want me to do? I didn't agree to the divorce. How can you leave me? I looked at her pitiful expression. The last time I saw it was in the gossip news, where she was cuddling with Ito Makoto, acting all co. A wave of sorrow washed over me as I looked at her emotionlessly. Isabel, since I married you, not a single day has belonged to me, and I haven't had a single day of genuine happiness. How do you expect me to continue living like this? Making me continue living in this swamp is truly killing me. Her hand stiffened, seemingly frightened by my resolute gaze. Miss Liu, let's part on good terms. I pushed her away and picked up my suitcase. She stood there like a lost child. Was being with me that miserable for you? I couldn't believe she had the nerve to ask that question. Oscar, you were the one who said you wanted to marry me. Before she could finish, her throat seemed to close up and her eyes turned red. I turned away, speaking coldly. In the past, I was blind to your true nature. Are you satisfied now? You. She was furious, her face pale. I dragged my suitcase out of the room, and she shouted after me in anger. Fine, if you want a divorce, we'll get a divorce. Oscar, you'd better not regret this. Isabel had her secretary deliver the divorce agreement, as I signed it. The secretary watched me, looking like she wanted to say something but didn't. Isabel picked up the pen, hesitated for a few seconds, and scribbled her signature. It was finally over. At that moment, I felt an immense sense of relief. It was like being a balloon released into the sky, free to drift away. I picked up my luggage and left. Isabel stayed inside the entire time. She had glared at me throughout the process, as if she wanted to devour me. It was strange, now that we were divorced. She could openly be with Ito Makoto. Mr. Oscar, may I drive you? The secretary asked politely, trying to help with my suitcase. I moved the suitcase slightly away from her. No need. The car I called has already arrived. 
From now on, I have nothing to do with the Liu family. Her expression stiffened, and she nodded woodenly. I got into the taxi, fastened my seatbelt, and took one last look at the place where I had lived for a year. The lavishly decorated villa felt empty and cold. I had a small apartment in the city center. It couldn't compare to this place, but at least it was mine. As the car started and drove a few hundred meters, the wind blew in through the window. I was about to close the window when I suddenly saw it in the rearview mirror a figure rushing out of the villa gate. Isabel? She was running fast, not caring that her shoes had fallen off. Oscar? Her voice was like the desperate cry of a fledgling bird. The rest of her words were lost in the wind. That figure grew smaller and smaller. The sunlight shone on her fluttering skirt, reminding me of the proud moo I had secretly admired in my youth. I closed the window leaving everything behind. Driver. Go faster. Taking off the hat of being Isabel's husband inevitably caused some connections to be lost. But I hadn't been idle all these years. Some sincere partners wanted to continue working with me, so I offered better terms in return. In September, my high school alma mater celebrated its centennial anniversary and invited me to give a speech. It just so happened that I had a slot in my schedule so I planned to go back and take a look. If needed, I could donate some money for charity. Besides, it was a good opportunity for positive publicity for my company. Today, or turn to my alma mater coincided with the registration day for new students. The faces of the high school students, full of youthful innocence, made me nostalgic. Before the speech, I wandered around the school. Back then, Isabel and I were in the same school, a different classes, but that didn't stop me from paying attention to her every move. I didn't know why, but ever since I stepped into the school, many memories of her kept flooding back, and I couldn't block them out. Clearly, I had planned to let her go. I walked into class 6 of the third year, which used to be my classroom. The students were all busy finding their dorms and hadn't come to class yet. I sat in my old seat, the desk hadn't changed and still bore some of the scratches I left behind. Back then, influenced by TV dramas, it was trendy to carve the name of the person you liked onto your desk or write it in a hidden part of your book, secretly confessing in an unnoticed place, imitating the romance of idle dramas. I had done something so foolish back then too. My confession was carved under the desk. Even in such a hidden spot, I was still afraid of being discovered. So I carved. I like Maria. Maria was a popular actress during our youth, Nobo didn't like her. I liked her because of a movie she starred in, where her character's personality resembled Isabel, so I used her as a substitute for the unspeakable name. I bent down to look under the desk and found that someone had discovered it. The name Maria had been scratched out, and next to it was written, Isabel. I was stunned. When did she find out, and when did she? It felt like something was about to surface, but there was a layer of fog. Suddenly, my head started to ache. In a panic, I stood up and banged my forehead on the desk, a dull pain spreading. At that moment, a gentle voice came, surprised. Oscar? I turned and saw my former homeroom teacher standing by the window. Oh my. It's really you. I thought I was mistaken. Ms. Eva. I went out to chat with her, talking about recent events and my reason for being there. Ms. Eva was close to retirement, her face as kind as ever. She used to teach Chinese, and her classes were my favorite. I heard you and Isabel got married. Sometimes I see news about you too online. You make such a handsome couple. I smiled stiffly. The divorce hadn't made it to the news. Only people in our circle knew. I noticed it back in high school. She always had a crush on you. High school? I frowned. Isabel and Ito Makoto were in the same class, and I didn't have much interaction with her. Yes, you didn't know. Isabel often didn't go home after school. Her parents even called the school. Her math teacher, who was also her homeroom teacher, was worried sick, thinking she had gotten involved with some delinquent. No matter how good her grades were, if she took the wrong path, it would be hard to come back. Later, she was punished to stand in the office. The math teacher questioned her for a long time, asking why she didn't go home after school. What she said, we all remember in the office. What did she say? I asked. She said, if the student office couldn't solve the bullying problem, she would go to the principal. 
If the principal couldn't solve it, she would go to the education department. No one could treat Oscar like that. She laughed, her eyes wrinkling kindly. I was bewildered, not knowing these stories. There were indeed some annoying rich kids in high school who hung around like thugs. They knew my mother had passed away and spread rumors. They insulted me daily and would lock me in the bathroom if they were in a bad mood. Unfortunately, my dad didn't have the power their fathers did, so I had to endure it. So, Isabel often stay after school to help me. But after we got married, she never showed me a kind face. Before leaving, my homeroom teacher asked for my autograph for her daughter, who liked me a lot. When did I become so famous? This memory made me realize that Isabel might have hidden many emotions and stories in our marriage. She once protected me, but now, for various reasons, she has become indifferent to me. This discovery leaves me with complex feelings, a mixture of gratitude for the past and helplessness and confusion about the present. On the flight back to the city, my fingers hesitated over my phone, wanting to ask Isabel about what happened today. After some thought, I decided it was better to ask her in person. I looked at the white clouds outside the window, my thoughts tangled. But as fate would have it, trouble was brewing. The plane encountered extreme weather and malfunctioned. My assistant, sitting beside me, panicked and clung to my hand, crying. The cabin lights flicker, and passengers began to shout and scream. My head started to ache again, and I felt an overwhelming sense of irritation. The pilot took emergency measures, managing to make a forced landing on the nearest sea surface. Everyone was floating in the sea with life jackets on. I tried to get closer to my assistant but was swept away by a sudden undercurrent. Panic set in as I struggled, gradually losing strength. When I woke up, my surroundings were unfamiliar. It was a house made of bricks and dirt, covered in dust, old and dilapidated. A simply dressed middle-aged man walked in and smiled at me. You're finally awake, here, drink some medicine to prevent your wounds from getting infected. I tried to sit up but felt pain all over my body. My rib seemed to be broken, and my foot was swollen like a pig's trotter. I looked at my hands, which were covered in tiny cuts. The man, named Martin, said he found me by the sea. He told me I had been swept away by the undercurrent and must have hit many rocks, causing all these injuries. He initially thought I was dead, but recognizing my face, he brought me back, not expecting me to still be alive. This place was a small fishing village, nestled between the mountains and the sea. The men mostly worked outside or fished, while the women stayed home, doing laundry, cooking, and farming. For several days, Martin took care of me. My body was cold and weak, my wounds wouldn't heal, and I often slept in a daze. The medical conditions here were limited, and getting to the city required a long journey over the mountains. If I hadn't seen it with my own eyes, I wouldn't believe that such backward places still existed in today's rapidly advancing world. Martin fed me medicine, then looked at me with some embarrassment. Oscar, we've gotten to know each other a bit. Could you dot 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 give me your autograph? An autograph? I frowned. This was the second time I had received such a request. My son works in town and brought back a magazine. I saw you in it. You're a big star. They say a celebrity's autograph can be sold for money, is that true? He asked eagerly, feeling it might be too mercenary and not daring to meet my eyes. Oscar, I mean no offense, I just want to save some money to get my son a wife. I looked at him, bewildered, Martin, you must have mistaken me for someone else. As far as I knew, I had never been in a magazine. No mistake, your smile is just like that of the man in the magazine. I may not be well educated, but my eyesight is sharp. He spent a long time rummaging through his house to find the dirty magazine cover. The hard paper was stained with cold dust, and I saw a face identical to mine. The man in the picture was smiling confidently, striking a carefully posed stance. That overwhelming feeling surged again. My head throbbed. It was as if some memories were locked away in a box, but I couldn't find the key. To repay Martin as soon as possible and to recover my health, I asked him to borrow a mobile phone. In the whole fishing village, there were only a few people with phones, and they were all basic ones. There was no signal inside the house. Martin had to go up the mountain to cut firewood, so he took me along to find a signal. He supported me the whole way, and I felt immensely grateful. My ribs hurt faintly, and I bit my lip to endure it. Just drinking herbal medicine wouldn't heal these wounds. While Martin cut firewood, 
I slowly moved around, trying to find a signal. Finally, on a small hill, I found two bars of signal. I called Daniel, but there was no answer. I quickly sent a text message asking for rescue. As I waited for a reply, it started to drizzle. Martin urged me to go back, saying the mountain road would be difficult in the rain. At night, the rain got heavier, causing a landslide that blocked the road. I looked at the phone, which had no signal, and could only wait silently. Lying in bed, barely holding on, I prayed for the rain outside to stop. The thick rain mist made the moonlight faint. I couldn't help but wonder what Isabel was doing at this moment. Was she whispering sweet nothings with Ito Makoto or lying in some assistant's arms? Why did she do those strange things that made me overthink? I felt cold all over, no matter how thick the blanket was. Until Martin woke me up. It was still pitch black outside, and I looked at him in confusion. Oscar, my brother said someone came down the mountain road. We don't know if they're here to repair it or just passing by, but from their attire, they seem to be from the city. Do you want to go borrow a phone from them? Maybe their phones work better. A glimmer of hope rose in my eyes, thinking Daniel might have come for me. I struggled to get up, and Martin took me over with an umbrella. On the mountain road, we could vaguely see the light of flashlights. There seemed to be many people. They were all bent over, digging the soul vigorously. As we got closer, a familiar figure came into view. Isabel was kneeling in the muddy pit, her delicate figure trembling as she dug up dirt, scoop after scoop. Her trembling, choked voice was mixed with the sound of rain, a mix of curses and pleas. Oscar, don't let me find you. If I do, I won't let you go. Why is there no one? Didn't they say there was a signal here? Useless. A bunch of useless people can't even find a person. The others didn't dare to speak, diligently digging as if there was treasure hidden. A pile of broken shovels lay beside them. Who knew how much force had been used? The bodyguards couldn't stop Isabel, so they just held an umbrella for her. Oscar, I'll find you soon. Wait for me. Wait for me. Dot, dot, dot. She murmured to herself, gradually choking up. I walked up to her weakly. Isabel, she didn't hear and continued digging. The delicate hands of the pampered daughter were already blooded and raw from the dirt and rocks. Isabel, I'm here. I raised my voice, and she trembled all over. Isabel slowly turned her head, as if doubting her own ears. When she saw my face, her tear reddened eyes softened instantly. The bodyguards looked over, but didn't dare to act rashly. Her probing voice was cautious, as if afraid I would run away. Oscar, it's me. As soon as I spoke, she stumbled and rushed over. She gently touched my face, feeling the warmth, confirming my existence. The next second, she threw herself into my arms. Oscar, I was wrong. Don't leave me. I'll do anything, but don't treat me like this. I'm begging you dot dot dot. She sobbed, soaked by the rain, the cold seeping in. She hugged me so tightly that it hurt my wounds. Tain. I struggled, frowning. She quickly let go, noticing my injuries, her eyes reddened with guilt. She soon called a helicopter to take me away. Before leaving, Isabel gave Martin a large sum of money and promised to support the small fishing village. On the helicopter, I seemed to have a fever, lying weakly on her lap. In the bright light, I could finally see Isabel clearly. Her clothes were torn and dirty, her face looking like she had been mining. Even with grass stuck to her, the noble lady's appearance was gone, looking no better than the bedraggled bodyguards. The mountain road was too narrow for cars, so they must have come on foot. With the rain, who knows how many times they had fallen into pits, getting cut by sharp weeds. I couldn't help but feel heartbroken, clutching her clothes in my delirium. Isabel, who am I? Her body stiffened, looking at me with probing eyes. Do you remember? You're my husband, Oscar. When we arrived at the hospital, Isabel also collapsed. She had many small injuries and had been sleepless for days, finally unable to hold on any longer. The first thing she did when she woke up was to look for me. During my recovery, Isabel stayed with me every day, not allowing me to worry about company matters. Whenever I mentioned Ito Makoto, she would look helpless and repeatedly emphasize that he was not her first love. If I was a male star, then what about the CEO of Times Entertainment? I pressed Isabel for answers, but she insisted on waiting until I was fully recovered. On Friday afternoon, 
My father, Marco, came to visit. The moment he walked in, I almost didn't recognize him. It was as if there was no memory of this face in my mind. The why didn't my father come looking for me when the accident happened? Why did it take him a week after my hospitalization to visit? Bodo, I've been so busy. I only just found time to see you. You won't blame me, will you? Marco smiled kindly. But I felt he was insincere. He made small talk, but his words were probing. I heard you and Isabel got divorced. Why? Didn't she take good care of you? Didn't Mr. Liu like you? Why don't you ask him for help? Maybe he can persuade Isabel. I frowned, suddenly realizing something. When I was the CEO, I had never seen Marco, a father who knew nothing about his son's whereabouts, but focused on external things. What did that indicate? He only cared about benefits. I looked down, weary. I'm tired. Please leave. Marco's smile froze, but he didn't say anything more. Before he left, he gave me a gold card. He said it was for buying nice gifts to please Isabel and that I could repay him double when I had money. I stared at the gold card on the table, finding it exceptionally glaring. A wave of resentment rose within me, and I grabbed the card, chasing after him. Marco was waiting for the elevator, a flamboyant woman standing beside him. My stepmother, Lisa. I stood behind a potted plant, overhearing her complaints. Your son has nothing to do with the Liu family anymore. Why give him money? Keep your voice down. I saw Liu's bodyguards nearby. I think Isabel still has feelings for Bota. Even if she does, they're divorced. I told you your eldest son is unreliable. Lisa mocked. And Marco didn't refute her. Even agreeing with her. He looked at Lisa's belly and sigh. All right. Let's go check on the IVF situation. Don't worry. Even if I can't have a son, I'll find someone who can give you one. My eyes widened in shock at their worldview. Fragments of memory flashed. And the headache returned. Lisa had health issues and had never conceived after marrying him. Two IVF attempts had failed. Since my father remarried, after my mother passed away, he had increasingly despised me, as if my existence was a constant reminder of the past that could never be erased. He only wanted a descendant with this woman to inherit the family business, no matter how hard I studied. He never acknowledged me. So he came here just to see if I still had any value left, to see if I could reconnect with the Liu family. He never intended to hand over the company to me. So how did I end up taking over Time's Entertainment? The headache spread, the dull pain piercing my heart. My eyes reddened, and I struggled to breathe. Suddenly, a hand wrapped around my waist. Oscar, don't listen anymore. The sweet scent of perfume enveloped me, isolating me from the clamor. My headaches started again. But this time, I remembered many things. I remembered the suppression in the Oscar family. I remembered how Isabel chased after me for a long time in college. I remembered being discovered by a talent scout and becoming a national idol. Isabel was anxious beside me and called a woman. My previous therapist, Diana. Diana asked me to talk about my current feelings and talked with me for a long time, so long that I fell asleep. In my dreams, I was a dazzling star. It was like I had found the key to that memory box. Everything inside surfaced. My name is Oscar, and I am an actor. I am also Isabel's husband, as far back as I can remember. My parents' relationship was broken. Looking back now, I realized they never shared a meal at the same table. It seems I was destined to have only one person who loved me from the moment I was born. But she passed away when I was very young. My stepmother's abuse and bullying from my classmates made me retreat into the false stories and fantasies from which I never wanted to emerge. Sometimes, I wished I could be like the protagonists in those feel-good novels. I wanted to be the main character, to become the villain, to experience different lives, to be anyone except myself. Isabel and I were childhood sweethearts, secretly in love with each other. We dated in college and got married after graduation. She was really tsunder, always saying no but giving in to whatever I wanted. I loved my job. I loved the characters on stage because, at that moment, I didn't have to be myself. I became the characters in the books, with the stage revolving around me and the plot unfolding at my feet. I immersed myself in one role after another. 
until I took on a web drama called The Return of the Ex-Husband, a revenge-themed series. Daniel and Ito Makoto were also actors in the drama. When I watched the first few episodes, the young protagonist's psyche seemed to mirror mine exactly. At that moment, I saw myself. In the early episodes, the young protagonist had lost his mother at an early age. His father abandoned the family, and his stepmother hung him from the beam man beat him. The actress playing the stepmother was a seasoned performer, and her expressions and movements made me feel she was that stepmother. I trembled, wanting to scream but unable to utter a sound. When it was my turn to act, I completely immersed myself. The protagonist also married a wealthy family's daughter, but was looked down upon by everyone, treated as if he were a freeloader. To reclaim himself, he decisively divorced, built his company into a top entertainment enterprise, and exacted revenge on the scumbag woman and her first love, crushing all those who doubted him. I suddenly wanted to be like him. Gradually, after each scene, I found it hard to shake off the emotions. Even when I did, I felt disoriented. Sometimes, I felt the me in the drama was the real me. I played a version of myself that wasn't really me. In the end, I couldn't distinguish between the drama and reality. After the drama wrapped up, I couldn't snap out of it and started exhibiting strange behaviors. For example, I would suddenly make Isabel sleep in the living room or call her a scumbag. I would also treat Daniel as a close brother when I saw him in the makeup room. Isabel noticed something was wrong and called Diana to help me. She diagnosed me with dissociative identity disorder. Unable to snap out of my roles, I mixed film and life, rewriting it into my own script. Isabel didn't dare intervene recklessly and tried to accompany me in slowly coming out of it. So, she gathered a group of people to act with me, almost bringing the entire entertainment industry along. A voice rang out. There's a script of the return of the ex-husband on your right. Pick it up and tear it apart. Oscar, it's time to wake up. On the day I recovered, Isabel picked me up and took me home. She personally cooked a meal for me which was barely passable. I finally understood why the food the driver brought before was so terrible. It was all made by her. I looked at her with teary eyes, and she told me not to cry. But as soon as she said that, tears began to fall from my eyes. Isabel hugged me, and she couldn't stop her tears either. I said, I'm sorry, Oscar. You didn't do anything wrong. It's all my own choice. As long as you don't leave me, I'll do anything even act or play any role with you. She cried softly, with a mix of joy and relief. Silly girl. I bent down and kissed her. That evening, while she was taking a bath, her phone kept lighting up on the table. Isabel, someone is messaging you. It seems urgent. Can you reply for me? She had always been like this. Her password was my birthday. I opened her phone and saw a string of messages from her friend Clara. Clara. Hey. Miss Isabel, can you let me have that drone project? Clara, don't play dead. Clara, if you don't give it to me, I'll send this video to your husband. The video showed Isabel drinking with friends at a bar. She was lying on the table. Her face flushed, seemingly having drunk a lot. Honey, honey, she murmured repeatedly. Like an abandoned kitten, someone came over and patted her. It was Diana. That mischievous friend of hers, hey, wake up, stop calling him, your husband ran away with someone else, nonsense, it's all your fault, you bunch of little coquettes, giving bad advice, you actually made me really divorce him, if it weren't for you, would my husband have run away, she yelled, sounding extremely aggrieved, her friends burst into laughter, soon, they stopped laughing because Isabel was crying so heartbreakingly, I had never seen her cry so uncontrollably, so deeply saddened. In the video, I recognized the clothes she was wearing. It was the day we signed the divorce papers. That was the day she ran out to chase after me. A wave of bitterness washed over me, and I felt her pain as if it were my own. I was such a jerk to have made her this miserable. Isabel walked out of the bathroom and saw my red, teary eyes, immediately becoming worried. What's wrong? Oscar? Did I do something wrong? I was crying uncontrollably, repeatedly apologizing. She saw the messages on her phone and immediately understood. Oscar, 
It's all in the past. She patted my back, comforting me. Isabel, why didn't you send me to the hospital then? That way, I wouldn't have, wouldn't have treated you like this. My Oscar is so afraid of being alone. How could I bear to leave you there by yourself? She squeezed my fingers and buried her head in my chest. After being with Isabel for a month, my emotions had returned to normal. During this time, she never brought up the topic of getting remarried. I knew it was my illness that made her hesitant. She was giving me time to work on being Oscar. I decided to make a comeback and continue pursuing my acting career. Isabel still supported my decision unconditionally. After my comeback press conference, not a single director or production contacted me. My medical history was indeed off-putting, but that was fine. I started over with my studio, without good roles. I took on minor roles, no matter how small the role. I meticulously studied it. Isabel quietly supported me without interfering. Six months passed, and a director noticed my performance in a supporting role and decided to cast me as the fourth male Lee in his film, playing a villain. Before filming, I repeatedly read the script to fully understand the character. When the movie was released, many people recognized me. Some fans edited my few scenes together. Online comments went from he looks familiar to he used to be a national idol. I regained some of my old fans. Soon, small production short dramas started inviting me. I became busy, and my time with Isabel decreased. Although exhausted, at the end of the day, people would say, Oscar, you've worked hard today. Finally, I was no longer just Isabel's husband. It took me five years to regain my peak status. Fans would dig up all sorts of details. So meeting Isabel felt like a spy operation, taking precautions against everything. Finally meeting at a hotel. She hugged me, pouting big star. It's really hard to see you. There's no help for it. Your husband is very career-oriented. HMPH. So how do you plan to compensate me? Her lips curved up. Eyes filled with ambiguous expectation. I cleared my throat awkwardly. I have a flight to catch in the morning. So? So I can't stay up till late. Isabel laughed and wrapped her arms around my waist. I meant compensation through remarriage. Didn't expect the big star to have his mind elsewhere. I was speechless. Damn. She tricked me. Fine. Then I'll go to sleep. Don't. Husband. We haven't even talked much since we finally met. There's nothing to talk about with you. Then let's communicate in a different way. Her passionate kiss swallowed the rest of my words. Later, under the covers, she pressed me. Oscar. When are we getting back together? When I win Best Actor, when will that be? When it's meant to be. Her expression changed. Her face turning red, looking adorable in her frustration. So my movements changed too. After some exhausting moments, I was about to fall asleep when I remembered something. I needed to inform her that I would be filming in the Deep Mountains, alongside actress Maria, and needed to let her know. As soon as I mentioned it, Isabel sat up, and willing, the last plane incident still scared her. I held her, reassuring her. Don't worry. The facilities in that mountain are fully equipped and quite safe. I want to visit Martin after filming. I wonder how the small fishing village is doing now. She nodded. I'll go with you then. All right. Sleep now. Is there nothing else you want to say? Nothing. Isabel squinted, holding me tight. Nothing. I heard this movie has kissing scenes. Two of them. How do you know more than I do? She huffed. Starting to get sarcastic. If I didn't find out, you wouldn't tell me. You want me to go to the theater and see it for myself. Oh. Come on. It's just a job necessity. Can't avoid it. I never use stand-ins. So I always tell her about kissing scenes. Isabel understood but was also very jealous. Oscar. You used to like her. Be honest. Have you always wanted to work with her? She's an award-winning actress. Who wouldn't want to? I mumbled, her face getting darker. Don't be mad. I'm not doing it for the kissing scenes. It was too late to explain. She bit my neck hard. Oscar, if I don't make you a saint today, I won't be Isabel. Isabel was fierce when jealous. I almost missed my flight the next day. 
At the end of the year, I was nominated for Best Actor because of my movie with Maria. Fans cheered for me online. Everyone finally recognized my hard work as they watched me climb back up step by step. On the night of the award ceremony, Isabel was more excited than I was. Whether we would remarry depended on tonight. Isabel and I sat separately, and the host was teasing us by dragging out the announcement. My heartbeat was fast and out of control. Finally, at the last moment, all right, no more teasing. The winner of the Best Actor Award is Oscar. Amidst the cheers, I was stunned for two seconds, confirming I heard it right before standing up. The lights converged on me, and I waved to everyone, tears welling up. At the same time, major apps crashed for over 10 seconds. Discussions about me skyrocketed by tens of thousands. As I took the stage, the applause was thunderous, and I felt a bit nervous. Amidst the dark sea of faces, I found Isabel. She smiled at me, looking prouder than I was. Stars may occasionally dim, but the moon always stays. I smiled confidently and firmly. Hello, everyone. I am Oscar. Extra story. My husband is a top idol, having won many newcomer awards. And the smartest choice I made was to pursue him during university. After we got married, I often visited him on set. After finishing this film, he could rest for a while, but lately, he's been acting strange. Often talking to himself, he even said he had a company and had to go to work. On cold winter nights, he kicked me out of the bedroom, looking at me coldly, saying ours was a marriage of convenience and there was no need to sleep together. Later, he said Ito Makoto was my first love, but from childhood to now, I've only loved him. I knew he was sick. I brought in Diana who told me not to provoke him, or he would confuse reality with the script even more. I began to cooperate with his acting. I didn't know how, but I tried my best to learn. I started a branch company, Times Entertainment, hired a large number of actors and extras to create a tailored living environment for him. Even the phones and computers were isolated from outside information. I enveloped him in a vacuum world, accompanying him out slowly. My dad said I was wasting money, but isn't earning money meant to be spent on the ones you love? Oscar wouldn't pay attention to me, seriously working or getting mad at me, but he managed the company well. The double degree from university didn't go to waste. Every day, I had to bring men home to put on a show, seeing him smile at Maria. I was furious. When would this end? I couldn't even hug him without pretending to dislike him. One day, Oscar wanted to divorce me. I went out drinking, trying to find a place to hide, hearing he was moving out. I rushed back. I couldn't bear to see him sat. And we ended up divorced. Damn it. The trope of the scumbag chasing his wife to the crematorium. Why did I have to endure this? Which idiot screenwriter wrote this bizarre story? Am willing. I chased after him, wanting him to see me clearly. I am his wife, Isabel. He clearly said he wouldn't leave me, but the car went faster and faster. I couldn't catch him. Diana said his tendencies reflected some of his true inner thoughts. After playing others for so long, his inner self finally realized he needed to be himself. I understood but felt very sad. During his various honors, he absorbed all the outside world's doubts about him. After the divorce, the hardest part was arranging actors to accompany him. He was going to give a speech. And the extras were in place. But the security slipped up and accidentally at his high school homeroom teacher in. Luckily, their meeting went without incident. But my subordinate said he knew about our high school days but didn't react much. Not even this could trigger his memory. Oscar, don't you love me anymore? I suddenly felt scared. The plane crash. The subordinates losing track of him. I sent that bunch of trash to plant trees in the desert. I searched everywhere, in the mountains and by the sea, but he was nowhere to be found. I went without eating or sleeping, searching for him everywhere. It was my fault. I didn't take good care of him. Daniel said he received a text message. Finally, I found him in a remote mountain village. I held him tightly, not wanting to let go. Oscar had lost so much weight. I cooked for him, but he wouldn't eat. He started to regain his memory until his father came to visit, 
triggering his deepest memories. He finally emerged from the script. He said he wanted to make a comeback, and I said okay. He said he wanted to be himself, and I said okay. He said he would remarry once he won Best Actor. I was speechless, fortunately. Oscar worked hard and won Best Actor, watching him receive the award. I cried secretly. I was so excited I couldn't sleep, so I called Diana in the middle of the night. She thought something happened. Her voice tense. I said it was nothing. My husband is the best actor. She hung up. Then I called Clara. Clara hung up too. Today. Oscar was in a good mood and went to the civil affairs bureau with me. The red marriage certificate. Regained. Made me want to cry. Finally. My Oscar came back.